All right, I got my first batch going. Now I filled this barrel, but I guesstimated to be two thirds the way up, because that's how much I was filling the other barrel up. If you remember, it's about to the top rung. I was doing about two inches away from this uh, from this ring, you'd say right here. But I got the heating element wired up to my old cord. You see here I have just some wire holding it up. And I didn't have any uh, metal tabs, I just took the wires directly to the prongs. So I'm going to buy some uh, terminal end tabs that will slide in between the uh, screws that tighten it down. And I'll work on making this more secure. But it's working. I can see bubbles coming up from the heating element, showing that it's heating up. I'm going to cover this up, put the tarp over it, let it heat up for an hour and a half, and see if we got 160 degrees Fahrenheit. If we do, I know I put the right amount of water in it. Also, too, I don't see any leaking, so that's a plus. All right, let's come back and, uh, in an hour and a half and I'll put some holes in it and see how that goes. So this is my second run with the uh, new design. Well, I had a problem already where the weight of the barrel and because the barrel itself starts losing structural strength as it gets hot, that the sides of the barrel have kind of pushed in where the wheels were. And you can see I've already doubled up the number of wheels I had because I only had four total, two on each end. And I put an additional four towards the center. Lined up with the uh, more of the rung kind of texture on the barrel so it's more strong, but you can see it's still caving in and I had to pick up the back end of the barrel and turn it to get it to go, so that isn't gonna work. But I believe I have a, an idea how to, to uh, make it work. I'm going to take another barrel, cut it in half, and uh, use it as a shell for this one to sit in. So the bottom of the barrel has much more structural strength and won't cave in when it gets hot. Now, uh, one thing I've noticed, too, with this design on a horizontal, way of doing things is that the heat seems to uh, either stay in it better or it heats up faster because it's only taken a, an hour and uh, heat already got all the way up to 180 which is as high as you can take it during pasteurization which is good that means uh, it shortens the duration that I have to have stuff in there but it was from the side of the heating element is 180 to the side without the heating element it's a 10 degree difference because it was only 170 over here. So what I think I might actually recommend and I'm going to try is to just heat the water up to about 170, 170 degrees Fahrenheit without any holes or anything in it and then put the holes in, screen and bricks and not plug in the barrel. That way it'll sit there for an hour and the temperature will probably drop to uh, 160 or so. But that way I don't have any worries about running it too hot because if it gets over 180 you're going to start running into sterilization instead of pasteurization and that's not what we want. So I'm going to empty this batch. It's still Everything, you know, everything's still working fine as far as it's success successfully being pasteurized, so no problems with that. And, uh, yeah, I can already tell the concept's working because as I turn it, the water jets out of these holes. And everything stays in and together pretty well with the screen on top. But I'm definitely going to have to reinforce that bottom, so I'm going to empty this out, make another batch tonight, then, uh, in a few days have a improved version ready. Well, I gave up on uh, the design I had. 
The problem was, even though I made this outer shell, which you see here, you see it's a barrel I just split down in half, cut the ends off, and then took some bolts, bolt together so it didn't slide apart. And I used that for a shell underneath the barrel. But it didn't help. It still got uh, flexible when the temperature got up there for about an hour to the point where uh, I could still sort of turn it but I still had to pick it up on the back end a little bit and to once uh, it got to where the holes were in the side of the barrel where the water pours out first it was getting in between the shell and that and then kind of jetting out the ends making them you know send the water where I didn't want it so I think that's not going to work. Maybe if you could figure out some sort of like, uh, I don't know, maybe like a metal shell or, or sleeve, or if, actually, if you know, if you had a half of a metal barrel, that might suffice. But uh, for the moment, though, I think I have a better idea. In doing all this, I had to uh, put one batch on the floor because I couldn't rotate it. But it made me realize, you know, on the floor is what I should be doing. You see. Knock my microphone off. You can see here, I have two of the shelf pieces from these larger shelves. Although the small shell pieces would work too, that are three three feet long, and I have one block on top of it here to chuck the uh, barrel on the one side, and then a concrete block on the other side to keep it from rolling back the other direction. And the idea is, we're going to fill it up have the screen in there just like we had before and then I'm going to roll it forward and because it's on the wire rack shelving that stands it up off the floor it's all right if it pours right on the floor because the barrel or the uh, the screen with the hot and the cotton seed hauls pushing against it will never make contact because the wire, wire racking there will prevent it and then it'll just go out through the floor and into the drain. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you me loading up some hauls here. You see, I have I filled this all the way to the top and tapped it down so I could carry it and didn't spill anywhere. See, this is a lot easier to load than the top design. A lot more space. And like I said before, I only had to uh, fill the barrel a little under two thirds. And it only took about an hour for it to heat up to over 165. Normally I would heat it up to just 160. Spread those out there. Then you see I have the piece of screen with some bailing twine attached. I'm gonna carefully work it in there. I need to I need to crimp over the edge of the screen or maybe use some tape to uh, keep her from jabbing me. Got me underneath the fingernail one time. All right. Go back and then we'll load our blocks. You want to try to be a little quick? 
because it'll want to sink to one side if you don't. most of it down like it usually should. Now, again, I'm only going to refill it with a little bit of hot water. Something else, too, I'm going to get, I got some dielectric grease ordered to put on the contacts and all the exposed element on the outside. That way it'll protect it from corrosion, corrosion and rust. But you see here I'm just getting all the dry hauls wet and into the water. Filling it with hot water of course. And I'm going to put the plastic back on it. Throw this water down the drain. And then place this tarp all over the entire thing. And make sure the tarp doesn't touch the contacts to the element, because it'll probably melt it. All right, pull your back in. And, well, actually, no, I'm not going to plug it back in. Take that back. Because the idea right now, I'm going to see about just heating it up to 165. 170 and then just leaving it sit at that temperature. I'm going to come down here in a half hour and check the temperature in the barrel to see if it's uh, still get above 160 and if it is I'm just going to let it sit there for another half an hour without plugging it in. If it uh, starts to drop below 160 I'll plug it back in for the remaining half hour. But this should uh, shorten the uh, time it takes to do this procedure. You figure I was doing an hour and a half before, so that's a, a half hour cut off from heating it up. And then uh, another half hour cut, because I was doing an hour and a half total, which as long as you know the heat is good um, and it isn't going to cool down. And I figure too, putting the, uh, the cold blocks in there at 160 degrees probably cools it down to 155 so you have to give it a little bit of extra time to just to make up for the difference of the cold blocks but if I can get it above 165 in just an hour the uh, blocks won't make a difference so again I'm gonna check this in a half an hour then uh, I'll show you show you me unloading it <laughs> 